Greetings Lumen students. Um, today is your Thursday video for week 18 and this is an enrichment video so we are um, talking about some other fun ways you can enhance your studies this week. Um, we've been learning about the Renaissance so I've got two projects you may want to try at home. One is making a, a um, fresco paint. I'm sitting in front of the Last Supper by Leonardo da Vinci, and he painted that on a wall with some fresco, um, as a fresco paint with wet plaster. Um, and we're gonna make some um, clay that is made of kind of an egg tempura. And so this is a fun project using Renaissance materials for paint. Um, I have some eggs, so the first thing you're going to do is, um, well, I guess first I need to get my chalk out, looks like. And we're going to be grinding the chalk into powder, so I can take two of the same colors of chalk um, and rub them together, or I can use a rock to um, break off the chalk into powder. This is just some sidewalk chalk. Any color chalk will do. The artists at the time would use clay, minerals, berries, um, even ground down insects to make colored pigment. Um, so, I don't know how much I need of that. It says don't breathe the chalk powder. That would be that. a little better, <laughs> a little faster anyway. Okay, let's try some blue. Okay. Yeah, that works. Better. Put a small piece in your bowl and then push down on it with the other kind of grind it into the bowl. Got lots of good color there. And then let's do maybe, well, I might need Okay, after I got that done, crack the egg and separate the yellow yolk from the clear egg white. Put the yolk in a clean bowl and mix it with two teaspoons of water. Whip it with a fork until the mixture is frothy yellow. Add spoons of egg water to the powdered, powdered chalk and stir with a paintbrush until you make a smooth, runny paint. Now use the egg tempera paint to make a painting. So I'm supposed to use the yolk. I thought I was supposed to use the, the white part of it. Oh, that's weird. Okay. All right, let's see. I think I might need to pour out a little bit of the water because it just says, how many? Two teaspoons of water. I have more than two teaspoons here. So. Ah, I need a bowl. Okay, the orange is not working here. Sorry, I wasn't as prepared as I thought for this video. Yeah. Maybe we'll make paint out of that too. I needed more bullets. So mixing the yolk with water and then mixing it with the colored chalk. And I think the whites are too sticky. Let's see how it does. Oh yeah. Looks very nicely. My red's a lot brighter than my yellow. Yay! 
<laughs> using a tempura based paint. Um, the kind of paint that they would use, um, kind of a wet plaster paint on walls, like the Last Supper. I wanted to show you something about this Last Supper. Um, this paint, interestingly enough, um, this egg tem tempera paint was um, the very long lasting. It was funny. Um, it was a thin, fast drying coat of bright color, and they uh, they found paintings made with this kind of egg tempura um, that are still as bright 700 years later. So that's really, really interesting. All right, I want to um, move aside a little bit to have you look at um, the Last Supper and parts of the Last Supper. So we have Christ and his 12 apostles here. And I wonder if you can tell by looking which of these apostles is Judas, the one that is going to betray Christ. Christ has just announced that one of his apostles would betray um, him. So let me move aside for a second and see if we can identify which one it is. Could you tell? If you picked the man right here in the black, with the black hair, you were right, that's Judas. Um, he's holding a bag of money, um, and so that's the money he's been paid to betray um, Jesus. His face is darker, and um, it's a little more shadowed than the rest in the painting. So kind of interesting. I don't know if you can see this in the painting, but he's knocked over a thing of salt that's spilling across the table. Um, which is kind of interesting too. Like he's surprised that that Christ already knows um, his secret. Okay, let's move my awesome egg tempura paint out of the way and try this technique used by Renaissance artists. And we're gonna also experiment with something else. So here I've got to change my background. One second. Okay, we're going to be experimenting with a glider. Um, Leonardo da Vinci, of course, did gliders. So um, let me tell you about this experiment with glider design. We want to follow the scientific method the way um, Leonardo did. So we're going to ex um, experiment with two gliders that will be built out of cardboard, straws, clay, and tape. You need to make two gliders that are exactly alike except for the size of the wing. One will have a shorter, wider wing, and one will have a longer, narrower wing. Based on the knowledge you have about flight, you will make guesses about which glider you expect will go farther. Is it going to be the shorter, wider wing or the longer, narrower wing? You get to choose. Every science experiment has what we call variables which are things that change in the experiment. A good science experiment will have only one variable. The variable in this experiment will be the size of the glider's wings, and we want that to be the only variable. As a result, we need to make sure that everything else stays the same. The size of the two gliders, for example, must be exactly the same. The way you cut and build each glider must be done in exactly the same way, and both gliders must be made from the same material. Where you test the flying of your gliders must be exactly right. Don't test one in the living room and one in the garage. The reason all these things must be kept the same is because we want to know the effect that wing size has on the distance a glider flies. If other things are different beside the wings, one of those factors may be what makes one of the gliders go further. So, to make sure that any difference between the flights of the gliders is due only to wing size, everything else about the gliders must be the same, and that's how you conduct a real science experiment. So another part of, oh, so you need to, uh, you need to find a good place to fly your gliders, as well as an accurate way to measure how far they went. A tape measure that can stretch out would be a good indicator. You could also have the same person measure the distance by putting one foot in front of the other over the entire distance, but it needs to be the same person every time, of course to keep the results accurate. Another way to make sure your data is reliable is to throw the gliders more than one time. You need to throw the gliders over and over, measuring again and again 
to find out if you get the same results most of the time. If the experiment is done only once, it may have been affected by factors you didn't think of, such as how you threw it, the wind direction at the time, or other things you didn't consider. Okay, so we're going to guess what um, one we think is going to go further. And then I forgot I need scissors, so hang on, let me go get some scissors. Oh, this is a problem because I can't find them. I'm pretty sure there's got to be some in here. Great. Rolls, kisses, Rolos, <laughs> balloons, glue gun, string. Oh goodness! I think I was Leonardo da Vinci over here. And no scissors. A pencil would be a good idea though to measure the distance of my two nails. <laughs> Don't give up. They have to be here somewhere. Found them. <laughs> okay, so we need to cut our two rectangles from an old cereal box, or in my case, this is a cracker box. Find something out of your recycling bin. Okay, we want one to be one by eight. We'll say that it's good. It doesn't have to be one by eight, but perfect. that's about the perfect length of my my box here. Okay. And the other one is going to be. Two by four. Now you'd want to make your wings out of the same box, right? Because you want your cardboard to be the same and not affect the flight of your glider either. This one is going to be two by four. So there's two inches. Two inches. All right, now we need to cut two smaller rectangles of exactly the same size, one inch by two inches. Okay, this is not... Um, our variable, right? So this has got to be the exact same. So our first wing was one by eight. Our second wing was two by four. And our tails are one by two. So you can remember those numbers. Some good measuring going on. Sister um, Mrs. Robertson is going to be so happy with all this science and math stuff we're doing. Okay. There are my two tails. Okay. Now I want to attach my tails to the end of each straw in exactly the same place. I want to make sure that they're right directly in the middle. They're hanging off the bottom. And then my wings, I want to attach about two inches from the top of my straw. Okay. Now 
remember I'm doing my little wing on my big wing. So there's two inches from the end, centered right in the middle. And the last thing you're going to need is a chunk of clay. So if you've got cardboard box of straw and some clay to play to or clay. We're going to stick a little chunk of clay on the end of each of our gliders. There we go. This is my first one. Here is my second one. So I need to do two inches from this end to Once I've got these taped on and I've got my clay attached, I think that one's not quite in the center. Let's measure and see. So we want it to be four inches on one side and four inches on the other. Ooh, it's like four and a eighth. I need to move it over a little bit more this way. way to do that is to um, measure the clay right or weigh the clay so I know that both my clay pieces are the same size so they're not a variable either but I forgot to bring a scale down <laughs> and I don't think there's one in my magic box so My clay is not going into my straw very good. My clay had kind of dried out, so I got it a little wet to see if it would work. That doesn't seem to be working very good. And I know where some more clay is too, dang it. It's not in my magic box, no. All right, students. If you try this Leonardo da Vinci glider experiment, I hope you have some wonderful results and maybe your um, hypothesis will come true. I gotta get my clay to stick. There we go. Ready? Here goes my first one. This is the long winged one. <laughs> it just went straight down. That doesn't seem to be have been a very good flight. Okay, let's try my next one. <laughs> it went a little further, <laughs> not much. I need to perfect my uh, my glider design. I think I had too big of heavy of clay at the front. So what do you think? All right, have fun, students. If you try any of these enrichment activities, you don't need to, but I just wanted to share a couple of them with you. And we'll catch you next week. Thank you.